Let the meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing. Double threat style. He's got a great show lined up uh, for you tonight. We got the Marine Mike Richmond's going to step up and in and kick it with us after he kicked some serious ass at Bellator 131. Joey Odessa is always kicking ass. The premier combat sport odds maker in the business. We'll crunch some numbers with Joey. We got some huge fights around the corner. We got Hendricks and Lawler. Joey's all fired up for Jones and Cormier. And you know what? So am I. I'm freaking stoked for that fight. And we expect to be in Las Vegas, Nevada for that fight. But speaking of numbers, uh, let's uh, let's bring in a man without further ado. Like Krusty the Cloud, no monologue tonight because my feet hurt. Let's uh, cut the small talk. And speaking of numbers, let's bring in a man who was uh, just victorious uh, a couple of weeks ago. He was a 4-1 to favorite. We liked him. He cashed the ticket. He kicks some serious ass. The Marine Mike Richmond steps up and in. Mike, uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So, uh, Mike, congratulations uh, on the win. Imagine, you know, to put that in uh, in baseball terms, sort of like a home run, isn't it? You crush the baseball over the fence. How, satif- how, how satisfying is it to get a first-round stoppage <laughs> win like that? You know, it, it always feels it, it always feels good to get in there and get a you know a knockout victory, TKO victory. Um, you know, but to go in there and uh, do it in that fashion, do it that quickly uh, against a uh, very durable, uh, extremely experienced veteran like Nam Fan, um, who uh, who's known for having a, a great chin and and being able to go the distance to do it on an opponent like that. Uh, it just makes it that much more rewarding, you know, and that much more uh, awesome. Yeah, you know, it looks like you're really, really in a zone right now. How comfortable are you uh, in the new weight class? Is it tough making weight? Is it worth? Is it worth the uh, the price that you have to pay? Because you look powerful, you look fast. Looks like you're you're in a real zone right now. Yeah, you know, I feel uh, I feel amazing at Bantamweight. I feel like I'm gonna, you know, I feel like I have what it takes to be the best in the world at Bantamweight. Um, to answer your question about the making the weight, yeah, the weight cut sucks. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, it, it sucks, but uh, the sacrifice that you put in to, to make that weight, um, you know, is paying off. And uh, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, and, yeah, you know, I just look forward to, to the next challenge um, and go out there and put on another exciting victory and uh, just keep taking it one fight at a time. Now, you mentioned Nam Fan being a very durable and tough guy. He's fought in some tough guys. He's been around a while. And like you said, a win is a win. And any time you get your hand raised, that's, that's great. But, you know, you almost get noticed more, don't you? More people talk about it after with, with holy crap uh, type of things. And uh, everybody that we told that you were coming on the show said the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, man, he really messed up, Nam Fan. It just sort of gets people talking more, doesn't it? And, there's so many fighters out there right now. It's tough to sort of, you know, get your name out there, isn't it? Yeah, you know, um, it's definitely, uh, you know, you got you got to put on great performances. You got to put on an exciting fight, like you said. Uh, you know, winning is great, but uh, you know, to go out there and win like that, you know, you, you're trying to you're trying to do it in front of a big audience. That was a big stage. That was a big opportunity for me to to go out there. And show more of the mass public, uh, you know, that I'm for real, that that that, I, that I'm a fighter to you know, to take seriously and, and to watch my career and watch me grow. Um, and, you know, to do it, it, it was very, uh, it was very. Um, I can't even put a word to describe it. You know, I felt really good. It was surreal, and I think it was kind of like another coming out party for me at the and you know in the bantamweight division. Yeah, I think it was as well. You've been around a while, but I almost felt that as well and I could feel it when you were coming out and one of the things that I commented on about the the card and as you mentioned, you know, you got 2 million people watching. Yeah, that, that's some serious numbers right there. Looks like Scott Coker's uh, influence has been positive. There were some critics about the way that the fight was promoted. Uh, with Bonner and with Ortiz. But in the end, mm-hmm. you guys are trending on Twitter. In the end, you got millions of eyeballs on all the fighters, so it's good for everybody. And the production was slick as hell. You know, it looks like Bellator is is going in the right direction. As a fighter, uh, how does it feel to be fighting uh, for Scott Coker right now? Do you feel any difference within the company? You know, uh, um, it feels great, obviously. Uh, you know, as far as the production value, that, that's an obvious. You know, uh, the intro 
you know, came coming out coming out to those sweet intros. You can obviously tell <laughs> it's different than that. Um, you know, that, that was pretty. I, I didn't know how elaborate the intros were going to be. I was kind of told about these new LED lights. That screen was pretty badass, Mike, eh? With with the Marine logo and stuff. That was pretty slick stuff, man. And I didn't know it was going to be all elaborate like that. And normally, normally they ask for what your walkout music is going to be, you know, the week of the fight, a couple days before the fight. Um, But they asked me, you know, about two or three weeks before the fight. They're like, hey, what's your music going to be? You know, email it in. So... And it kind of makes sense now, you know. I didn't know about the helicopter, the lights turning off, the helicopter <laughs> going, the marine scene, and then dropping the the ACDC black and back in black. I didn't know it was going to be all that. So when I'm behind the screen and, and that's playing, I'm like, "What's going on? What's going on?" You know. And then all of a sudden the music hit, and then the the wall, the screen starts rising. I'm like, "Holy, <laughs> I'm fired up!" <laughs> like I was already like I was already fired up, anyways. But that was just like extra just like extra motivation to go out there and just tear it up. Yeah, that, that was just so, awesome. And is it cooler? Do you like the ramp walk? Like you're walking sort of above everybody or like, cause it's different than the normal sort of, you know, walking through and no one can really see you. Everybody in the venue can see you in Bellator when you walk out on the ramp like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's very different, but you know, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I actually liked it. You know, they have your cornermen actually go around the side so you're like meeting your cornerman cage side, so it's literally just you walking out on the ramp. Um, I enjoyed it, you know, I liked it. It was different, and uh, it definitely it amped up the crowd. Uh, but on top of that, it amped up me as a fighter, you know. Um, and not many people can understand that feeling of of walking out. Um, but then you add the enter the intro and the entrance like that, it just, it just amps you up even more. I never like to uh, to make light of, of serious situations like war, but obviously your military background is well known. Uh, you know, Mike uh, was actually a sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps. And I've spoken to mm-hmm. Brian Stan about this, but it really just puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? A lot of fighters sort of overwhelm themselves because their fights professionally, that's the fights of their life, so to speak. Uh, you know, yeah. is, is it a different perspective for you? And not to make light uh, of anything, but a different perspective, when you're going in there, it's just different, isn't it? And, you know, it's sort of, and, and the flip side, you know, you got a guy like Masvidal from the street. The guy's fighting, Kim, you know, to heavyweights and Kimbo Slice videos. It's easier for him now. Uh, do you find that, you know, so to speak, just mentally, that it's, it's, it's sort of prepared you for this? Um, you know, I, I get asked that question a lot, and... Um... For me, you know, the, the Marine Corps infantry, you know, really translates to my training. Um, it, it really it really helps with my mental and physical toughness to endure the training, push myself hard during training. Uh, we say in the Marine Corps infantry a lot, you know, train how you fight, fight how you train. Um, and that really helps um, me with my training aspect. But when I'm getting ready to go out there and fight, you know, I, I go out there with the eyes like I'm a professional athlete. You know, I feel like um, I feel like a football player lacing up his cleats you know getting ready to go perform under the lights like any other pro athlete um yeah i don't really i, I don't really look at it as a life and death situation like i i just to me i don't know maybe other veterans that fight it's different for them for me i, I look at it as you know like any other pro athlete going out there um and, and going out there to perform so but as far as my marine corps training you know it definitely it definitely helps when it comes to uh, training and for fighting and mixed martial arts. I got to believe it puts a little extra pressure on you, though. I mean, people, you know, we, we see in, in Canada, you know, people are really, you know, the entire country cheers for every Canadian fighter. You know, in Brazil, uh-huh. we see this. USA is a very patriotic country, and it doesn't seem to trickle yeah. down to mixed martial arts, does it? Like, you know, you don't, you know, people really don't care. It's like, yeah, he's from California, so, you know, so am I. I don't care. For sure. You know, I'm like, I got Absolutely. money on the other guy. So, but it seems with you, you're a Marine, man. You're, so, it, it's added pressure. You're representing the freaking Marine Corps, man, when you go out there. You're, you know? And, uh, you, yeah, 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 you're right. You know, is, you know that, is that, you know, and I guess it's not bad pressure. It's just that extra, that extra rush, isn't it, man? Get the job done. No, for sure, yeah. This, our country is very patriotic, so whether whether they knew who I was, you know, especially live in the arena, whether they have any clue or any idea who I was, 
you know, when they announce me as the Marine or they, you know, talk about my Marine background, it does, it does draw more, more casual people to just root for me for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't look at it that way. You know, I just go out there, just get in the zone, um, and just go out there and look to destroy, you know, kill or be killed really. Uh, Mike Richmond with us. Uh, we got to wrap it up in a couple of minutes here, Mike, but I'm um, really enjoying this conversation years ago. I think it was UFC 89 or whatever. It was Brock Lesnar and Heath Herring in Minneapolis at the Target Center. And I did a bunch of shows uh, in Minnesota. And it just blew me away, man. You know, there were more fighters in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul area than there are in freaking Vegas. Because I'm like, yeah, we got to get some fighters to come down to the bar. Uh, Matty, uh, Matt Burke's place right by the, the Metrodome. And it was amazing, man. You know, Sean Shirk, uh, Caitlin Young. Brett Rogers, it went on and yeah. on, the sure dog guys. It's really, uh, you know, is it because people either play hockey and wrestle there, man, but it's really a fighting mecca in the Midwest, isn't it? Uh, you know, as far as, yeah, I mean, Minnesotans, you're either wrestling and you're playing hockey. You know, it's one of the two. Um, but, yeah, there was an era where we had a lot, uh, you know, a lot of big-name fighters out of Minnesota. Now we're kind of hitting a new, a new generation of guys that are come working up there, you know, working up the ranks here in Minnesota and getting that exposure. Uh, but, you know, I, I believe Minnesota MMA scene is growing and growing. It could always be more and more. Um, but, yeah, you know, the Midwest, you know, I, I would say Midwest, I would say Minnesota, Iowa area is pretty, is, is the mecca for Midwest MMA. Uh, Mike Richmond with us. So finally in closing uh, here, uh, how far, uh, you know, you said you visioned yourself uh, being a, a champion. How far away are you? And they scrapped the tournament format. And I guess the tournament format was good if you won. You know, you climbed it up and you won and you got a bunch of those checks. But then you were locked in after. So, you know, it, yeah. it seemed like the, the guys that won weren't happy. Guys that lost in the first round of the tournament weren't happy because they got to wait forever again. So they end up scrapping it. What are your thoughts on that? And do you like this? Is it an easier path, a better path now without the tournament to get a championship shot at uh, at Warren? Uh, for me, for me, it's a, for me, it's great because uh, you know doing a, a eight man tournament at one thirty five would would be difficult to constantly keep my weight down like that. Yeah. Um, because after the fight, I mean, I, after I weigh in, I'm already hydrating up over twenty pounds. You know, come fight night. Um, so for me, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy the, uh, I enjoy the new matchmaking style. I think you can put on exciting fights that are still meaningful that fans can enjoy. Um, you can see matchups that might not always happen with tournament formats, you know, based on what bracket you're in. Uh, you know, maybe I, I can see it for, uh, the unknown guy, you know, the guy that's trying to make a name for himself. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the path to the title could be longer. You know what I'm saying? You can't just bing, bang, boom, and then you're there. And you were, you know, you no one knew about you a couple months before. Um, but now, you know, it's going to be one of the, their path might be a little bit longer, winning more fights and then working your way to TV, you know. But uh, for us guys up there that, are, that have already been on TV and already have some type of fan base, you know, it's good for us. Mike Richmond with us. Hey, Mike, uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to be with us. Great performance uh, against Nab Fat. Really enjoyed it. Uh, you, know, you lit up uh, Twitter with the performance. Uh, you know what? Uh, you're in business, man. You're back in black uh, right now. I can't wait to see you fight again. Thanks a lot for the time, man. All right. Thanks for having me, man. Talk there's later. there's uh, Mike Richmond uh, with us. I was getting fired up when he was talking about getting fired up with the ACDC, the helicopters, and that Bellator production was freaking slick. So was his performance. We'll take a quick break. We'll send it to Costa Rica. Joey Odessa will join me. MMA Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. <laughs>